What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build Dead Build. A place where we've always wondered if a woodchuck could chuck wood, would they be going for volume or distance? Alright guys, the wife aka my shop goddess has been after me for a while to build her uh, one of those little couch tables uh, just to kind of kind of is an L that comes up and goes over the couch so she has some place to set her cocktail. But my thought was what I want to try to do is make a live edge looking table out of two by material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take so you guys may remember this from my uh, Viking chair build. I will link that right here if you haven't seen it. But this is the chair that didn't make it. This is the one that, uh, and this part was totally fine. It was the tail piece that just kind of didn't fit. But I figure I'll still make use of this piece of wood. I'm just gonna cut this piece off right here and I'm gonna use this part for the, the side or the leg of the table and the tabletop. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm gonna cut this in half and then I'm gonna carve kind of a live edge side into each side of it. We'll pour we'll fill it full of epoxy and then we'll make a table out of it. And hopefully it will look like it's a really expensive table that was really only about eight bucks. Plus epoxy and my time and all the other stuff. But the wood, the wood was only eight bucks. All right, guys, so we have a bit of an issue. Come here. So I poured the epoxy, I thought everything was good, and then this happened. Can you see all those bubbles? Those are all hard. <laughs> and the thing that sucks is it's 100% my fault. I'm pretty sure it was just too hot in the garage. I thought I had my temperature regulated, but I think it was hotter than I thought it was in here. And that happens when the epoxy cures too fast. So definitely pay attention to your labels and see like optimal temperatures to, to pour epoxy in. Unfortunately, I noticed that was happening uh, at the same time I had to go pick up the kids, so I couldn't even really mitigate it all that much. I just had to like let it happen. I also wasn't really expecting the whole thing to float as much. I mean, I put a couple of clamps on there, but I guess just the, the density of the epoxy versus the wood. Um, I ended up having to add more pieces and more wood. I'm gonna have to knock all those pieces off because they're all pretty much epoxy to the top of it anyway. But even with all that, I don't think all is lost. I think I can still run through the planer and take it down to a manageable surface. It's just not gonna be like as crystal clear as it was in that initial pour. Because it's like I always say, if you're gonna fail, fail forward.
the game plan was to sand these up through the grits and then glue the corner piece in today. But I've got a bunch of these little pock marks that are in the epoxy and I don't think I can do anything. I can't, if I want to do anything with those, I have to do that first. But I was going to mix up some epoxy and pour it in there, but I think I'm going to use CA glue because they're little tiny deals. I think that once we get it sanded down, you're not going to notice. This could be a horrible idea. So we're in the process of gluing this joint up. I have an issue though. So this miter was like perfect. It was like spot on. But when I was sanding the edges, I didn't take into consideration that the epoxy would sand faster. And even though I didn't sand very much, I have this gap here now. And this is a horrible idea, but this is the only way I can think to fix it right now. I've come too far now to scrap this project. Um, learn from my mistakes, kids. Apparently don't sand it at all. I thought I would need to sand the epoxy at least a little bit so it wasn't so opaque. Um, maybe that was a bad idea. Probably. It was a bad idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a very small batch of epoxy and pour it in here. And hopefully, if things go well, I'll be with you tonight. Ah, damn it. Not again. Hopefully, hopefully... Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Hopefully, I can color match this well enough that you won't notice. What's up guys? It is the next day again. And uh, we got our glue up going on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and put just some small L brackets in here. Those should be kind of hidden. And then the next step is, I tried to fill that void yesterday. And I would just put some epoxy in there, let it kind of sink in, put some more in there. And I thought I'd fill it all the way to the top, but I come out today and there's still a little bit of a void in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chamfer this edge. All the other edges are chamfered anyway. So that hopefully will mitigate that. I'm hoping it's, I'm hoping this is filled enough to where if I chamfer it, it's not gonna be a nightmare. <clears throat> and then I'm going to build the base for this, which is basically just gonna be kind of a U shape that comes out of, it comes out here uh, we're gonna take the torch to it and hopefully get some finish on it today uh, I would like to have this like 90% if not a hundred percent done today so we'll see we'll see if I don't run into roadblocks this should be pretty easy to get done uh, but this thing's been nothing but roadblocks so we will see wish me luck well you can wish me luck but if you're seeing this on video it's already happened so there's that. But in the immortal words of Big Daddy Kane, let's get to work. Did he say that? I don't know if he said that. I know he had, I work, I get the job done, I work. But I don't know if he said, let's get to work. Just, let's say he did. about you guys but this thing's been giving me enough problems that I wouldn't be real upset if it just burnt to the ground that being said let's light this on fire shall we now this is the time on sprockets where we dance and this is the time on Build Dead Build where we varnish. Don't forget to 
glove up. guys well it was a pain in the butt but I kind of love it so much of this did not work out the way I wanted it to but in the end it all came together and it's a really cool looking piece so let's talk about some issues first the biggest issue being of course uh, the epoxy not curing right or kicking too fast and that's a hundred percent my fault I thought I had the area where this is being poured cooled down after the reaction I got, I'm assuming that it wasn't. I did have a fan blowing underneath it. I was kind of hoping that that was going to reduce some of the heat. In the end, it didn't. Again, follow the directions. It is 100% my fault. Uh, the product is fantastic. I mean, look at it. Stuff's amazing. The second issue I faced was not clamping the piece down well enough. And honestly, that was just kind of like a, a judgment error on my part. I put two clamps on it, one on one and one on the other thinking that I just needed to have a little bit of pressure on there. Not taking into consideration the viscosity of the epoxy, and even with those two clamps on there, the other ends of the boards were raising up. In an attempt to hurriedly remedy that, uh, I ended up throwing a couple more pieces of wood in there, uh, not being really careful with where the epoxy went, and ran into two issues because of that. One, I actually epoxied two pieces of wood to the face of this, and had to knock those off and then actually plane off the rest of it. The other issue I had, which wasn't as apparent at the time until I took it out of the mold, of course, was one of these floated away from the wall of the mold. So I had a, like a quarter inch of epoxy just all the way down one side of this thing, which wasn't really the game plan in the first place. I would say just think out your clamping scenario a little better than I did. Um, just, just my bad. My bad. And if you're gonna use wood spacers, which I highly suggest when you're clamping, make sure you put a little Tyvek tape around those wood pieces. They'll come off a lot easier. And then the third issue, again, a user error was don't sand in the miter. I guess, honestly, I thought it was gonna, I thought I had to sand in there because I thought I had to sand it through the grits with everything else. But it's still, I mean, it's just, it's just a thicker chunk of epoxy right there. So it's always gonna look different. Um, I, I would say that miter was so spot on to begin with that I, I don't know other than maybe doing like a quick hand sand to knock off any if there's any burrs or anything I don't think I would sand it at all. Um, I did end up coming back and filling it with epoxy and it ended up working out in the end uh, but it, it took a lot more time. The end result is awesome. I was planning on more of a clear like you know crystal clear effect on this but the reaction that the epoxy had actually kind of like form like almost crystals in here. And I think it's just air pockets, but it looks kind of crystalline in nature. You're welcome. And it gives us this kind of cool like geode effect. And you still have light coming through it. And I think like I have a light underneath here right now to kind of illuminate it because I think it looks cool. Uh, and it diffuses the light throughout the piece and it actually makes it look a lot better. So shout out to Total Boat for having a solid product, even when I screw it up. If you guys have been thinking about doing anything with epoxy, I'll leave a link below and, uh, and a promo code. If it's your first time ordering through Total Boat, you get 15% off your first order. We all know epoxy is not cheap, so 15% off uh, will definitely hook you up. And speaking of shout outs, I also want to shout out uh, Arbor Tech. I uh, used their turbo plane to do the carving. That thing's amazing. I really, the only thing I had to do is come back with a flap disc and kind of clean that up. You could really do that with an orbital sander. And you could probably do it with the Arbor plane. I'm just not that good with it. I'll leave some coupon codes down below if you want to check out any of Arbor Tech's products. And while we're on the topic of shout outs, I'd like to shout out all of my patrons. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all your support. I really appreciate it. Thanks to all these guys who are in the higher tiers. And I'd like to say hello to our newest patron, Nellie Adams. Welcome to the fray. So as always, a special shout out to Stephen Mann and Nick the Greek. You know what you did. And as always, clinkies. All right, guys, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe man it's a button it's right there you click it once and you're done you click the bell and then you get notified every time i put up a new video and until next time thanks for playing
But now I gotta get back to work. Couch table things that just kind of comes up off the ground and has like an L shape that goes over the couch so she can set her wine on it and whatnot. My neighbor is trying to attack something with a broom. Interesting. Now is the time on sprockets when we dance. And now, now on 